context this passion for Jesus Christ. This is a somewhat famous story, even though it's intermixed with some other gospel readings that talk about a woman anointing Jesus' feet with her tears, and it could be that it was from the same group of stories being told, but John always has a purpose for every story he tells. And here's Mary who wastes all of this on Jesus. And of course the criticism is, why do you print so many bulletins? You're killing all the trees. Can't we just have a big screen up here and do away with killing trees? No? Oh, my, my, my. I was telling somebody we went to a Latin church yesterday, our Shoppers Anonymous Club, if you will. And, of course, they have a big three screens up there. One of the people in our group said, do you all have screens in your church? I said, I'd be gone the next day if I had screens up in our church. My, do I hear an amen? But there was not one tree killed to worship there except for the energy used to power the big Megatrons. What do we call them in the sports games? Are they Megatrons? Whatever they are. <laughs> one of our rules for this Church Shoppers Anonymous is not to criticize how other people experience God. Please don't criticize how other people experience God. If they experience God in a Pentecostal church with all the emotion and feeling that goes with that that turns you off, thanks be to God. As Jesus says in two different ways, if they're not against us, they're for us, and if they're for us, they won't be against us. Praise God that people can find God in emotion, in their heart, and even the frozen chosen, whichever group you decide is the frozen chosen. I know some Episcopalians have been called frozen chosen. Presbyterians are usually called that because of predestination. Uh, if they find God in their mind, C.S. Lewis had a conversion experience in his mind. For me, it was my heart. For you, it might be your gut. But here's what happened in the story today, is they criticized Mary's expression of her love for God. Shame on them. And Judas probably wasn't the only one. A good Episcopalian would say, that's not really good to do in church. We should save that for other times. And the great thing about being Episcopalian is, you guys do it whatever way you want. I mean, it's like herding the cats. Some are standing up, some are sitting down, some are kneeling, some are genuflecting, some are crossing, some are playing baseball because those all look like signals for a baseball game. Enjoy it. Give thanks that people find God, whether it's in the strict ritual of a, of a Greek Orthodox church or the looseness of a, of a miniature. They're judging Mary. Do you remember what happened when Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus listening to him? Martha, her sister, criticizes her for not doing any of the work. Remember that, by the way. Mary, Mary got the praise. So when I'm sitting in there not doing anything in Dr. Day or something else, just remember Mary. Think of me as Mary, okay? We need our Marys, and then we have many Marthas, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We all have our gifts. Mary poured out her heart to Jesus. Is there anything wrong with that? Is there anything wrong with that? Is there anything wrong with pouring out everything we have for our devotion to God? I hope not. I hope you don't feel that way. 
Many of us want to play it safe. Even play it safe with God. Be reckless with God. God can handle it. I was talking with a leader of another denomination and one of the roles of a priest is to protect the sanctity of what happens at worship, the sanctity of the sacrament. And that's a good devotion. My own devotion is God can handle it. God can take care of God's self. I don't have to defend God. But those are two different approaches to spirituality. And trust me, we all have our unique devotions. And the challenge for us, I believe, is to find where our devotion to God is expressed. Whether it's in uh, quiet meditation and prayer, whether it's in fixing things around this church, that's a devotion to God. Whether it's printing bulletins and, and using those bulletins for the glory of God. And I must say one aside, uh, you know, that line at the last is a famous line that people use, the poor you always have with you. Lucky for us, Jesus does not explain that. Unlucky for us, Jesus does not explain that. Which means we make up our own explanations, probably to justify who we are and what we do. The way I've always said, thought of it is, there will always be people more in need than I am that I will have the opportunity to help. That will never run out, nor will God's grace run out. But I think Mary challenges us to give our full <coughs> devotion to God. If not all the time, from time to time. So you might want to ask yourself, when in your life have you given your full devotion to God? If not, in your prayer life, ask God to help you to find a way. Because I promise you, that is a part of our spirituality. That's just one part of our spirituality. That needs to be honored. And as Jesus said in one of the other gospel readings where this woman anoints his feet with her tears in thanksgiving for forgiveness. For me, it's thanksgiving for joy. Uh, at at uh, Highland last night, as, as he did the Eucharist, he talked about Jesus paying the price for our sin. <laughs> However, we view that whether God required it, or maybe we needed someone to pay the price for our sins to feel truly forgiven and loved in such a way that we would give our all to God for that experience. In the name of the Father, the Son,